Hey everyone, my name is Mike. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Mike. I write prehistoric thriller novels, books with teeth, claws, and plenty of people getting eaten. Think Jurassic Park, creature monster books. Also published prehistoric magazine, completely free publication, released three times per year. The next issue is actually coming out at the end of April. If you'd like to subscribe, it's down in the description section and comment section. Again, completely free, no pressure. Now, for a lot of us who watched season one and season two of Prehistoric Planet, it was phenomenal. For me personally, it was as close to dinosaurs as I've ever gotten. I'm assuming if you're watching this video and if you watched Prehistoric Planet both seasons, it was phenomenal. The way the animals looked, the way they behaved, the way the predators always won't, weren't roaring with their mouths wide open, they were actually laying down like the tarbosaurs. You know, we potentially think a lot of lions would have done that and big predators today would spend a lot of time lounging around. We got to see Dreadnoughtus face off against one another, big sauropods being aggressive, mean, and angry to one another. And it only leads us to believe, will we see a uh, season three of Prehistoric Planet? I certainly hope so. And while I have no information regarding that, I'm here today to talk a little bit about a discussion about what would the timeline be? What time period would you want to see Prehistoric Planet go back to? Now, again, I loved both seasons, season one and season two. But if I'm being truthful, my hope for season two would have been that we moved on to a different time period. We did not. We stayed at that 66 million years ago. But, you know, regardless, it was still phenomenal. Dino Chiris, all of them, um, seeing the information in Mongolia about the Mongolian Titan, it was magnificent. Truly, truly, I have not had a dinosaur experience like that since Jurassic Park. So I thank everyone involved with Prehistoric Planet. For season three, it would be my hope that we do move on to a new time period. Now, the question would be, do we move on to one single time period or do we move on to multiple time periods? Multiple time periods would be the best, I think, as far as visiting different points in dinosaurs' history. You know, I think for a lot of us out there, we'd love to see the Morrison Formation in the late Jurassic. All those big sauropods coexisting with a lot of big predatory dinosaurs, Saurophaganax, Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Torvosaurus. I think we'd really love to see that Morrison formation 150 million years ago. But I think that that would only work if they did multiple timelines, multiple time periods. Now, the time period, if they are to take the one time period approach, and I'll be curious to hear your thoughts on this in the end of the video, the time period that I think would work best and would get the most bang for your buck, where you'd get the most amazing creatures of prehistory, would be, let's call it roughly 95 million years ago. Okay, now, Africa, North Africa, 94 to 95 million years ago, it's been regarded that that may be potentially the most deadliest ecosystem of all time. You had Spinosaurus running around, Carcharodontosaurus running around, Bahariosaurus running around, Delta Dromius. There are many big, big predatory dinosaurs that formed what is known today as Ernst Stromer's Riddle. How could all these big animals be moving around, living in the same environment, and all coexisting? Well, I believe the short answer to that is they're all exploiting different food niches and resources. But if you're staying in that North Africa time period about 95 million years ago, you also have the giant Perala Titan an enormous sauropod. And those of us old enough to remember the lost dinosaurs of Egypt from the early 2000s, shout out Matt Lamana, Ken Lacovera, some of the scientists involved in that. We remembered that lost dinosaurs of Egypt from 2002. That was an amazing experience to go into the Sahara Desert with them and see what they unearthed. And Perala Titan was one of those amazing creatures. Now, again, 95 million years ago, if we went to Argentina, that would also potentially put us in the range of Giganotosaurus, okay? I would love to see Giganotosaurus. And if I'm being truthful, the Giganotosaurus in the last Jurassic World did not really do it for me. That does not seem like the animal, and that just really didn't fill my need for this massive predatory dinosaur. Also, about 95 million years ago, we could potentially even work in Argentinosaurus, so what is regarded as maybe currently right now the biggest dinosaur of art all time, Argentinosaurus could make an appearance if you strategically set Prehistoric Planet Season 3 
95 million years ago. And again, curious to hear your thoughts at the end of the video. I do think it really be cool to just go from time period to time period to time period and just bounce around throughout all of dinosaur history. You know, I'd love to see Cryolophosaurus in Antarctica, but that would require multiple timelines. And based on season one and season two of Prehistoric Planet, it looks like the filmmakers and the executive producers and everyone behind this series, it looks like they like setting it in one specific time period. So if I had my choice, I'd say 95 million years ago is going to get the best bang for your buck. Giganotosaurus, Argentinosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, Spinosaurus, Paralotitan. you got big meat eaters, huge plant eaters, fill in the gaps of everything else that we could see. Brings me to the most important part of the video, your comments. Love to hear them in the comment section down below. If we do get a season three of Prehistoric Planet, what time period would you like to see? Appreciate the support in these videos and see you in the next one. Take care.